Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Space News Pod, a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Starlink Maritime, which is Starlink Internet Service, which is SpaceX's rural broadband satellite internet service, but for boats. So SpaceX tweeted something the other day that made people absolutely lose their minds. And I want to show you guys that Starlink Maritime allows you to connect from some of the most remote waters in the world. And then they send a link to Starlink Maritime. Now, mind you, Starlink is about $110 per month for a rural location. Okay, so if you live in a cabin someplace in the woods and you don't have internet connectivity right now, you pay about $600 plus tax and other fees uh, to get the equipment. So it's about $635. And then you pay about $110 per month for rural internet access. So if you live out in the middle of nowhere, or if you have low connectivity, Starlink is a really good fit for you most of the time. If you have um, like a hotspot or something like that, which only gives you X amount of data per month until they slow you down, Starlink is a really great choice. But for maritime people, there is really not that much choice out there. And what they do have is extremely expensive. $5,000, $6,000 a month, you know, for for internet connectivity that's not that great so spacex sent this tweet out starlink maritime allows you to connect from some of the most remote waters in the world now you really want a great internet connection when you're out there uh in the middle of nowhere basically and if you want to connect with people if you want to do work from your boat if you need to make distress calls anything like that starlink can help you with that so elon musk stated here uh, after the whole Mars catalog tweeted, I love the Starlink Maritime is the same exact thing as residential Starlink, but on a boat, but it's priced 50x higher. Smart vertical specific pricing. And Elon had to go through this, all these tweets, and tell people exactly what's up. He said, no, it's dual high performance terminals, which are important for maintaining the connection in choppy sea and heavy storms. Still, obviously, premium pricing, but way cheaper and faster than alternatives. And this is where the pricing comes up. SpaceX was paying $150,000 per month for a much worse connection to our ships. $150,000 per month. What? That's so much money. Also, being ruggedized for relentless salt spray and extreme winds and storms in deep ocean is not easy so it's not the exact same terminal as you'd get at your cabin in the woods it's rubberized it's uh it's more durable it has to withstand everything out in the ocean so one hundred fifty thousand dollars a month for much worse connectivity to our ships so look we have to think about this for a second if you're way out in the middle of the ocean something happens there are other forms of communication of course but if all of those fail and you have a starlink terminal available to you it's just a good idea to have that available i want to show you what spacex also posted on their starlink site okay these are public files and uh spacex says starlink increases spacex recovery fleet throughput by 5900 percent reducing costs by 70 percent um, let me zoom in here a little bit for you so you can actually see this stuff as I'm going through it. But as the world's leading provider of launch services and the only provider with an orbital class reusable rocket, SpaceX operates a fleet of 10 ocean going vessels designated to safely and reliably recover rockets and spacecraft um, that take both humans and cargo to orbit. So they go on to say unreliable um connectivity at a high cost prior to starlink spacex's maritime recovery fleet relied on traditional geostationary satellite internet service vsat uh, which came with high latency low bandwidth and poor reliability systems were also challenging to install and required frequent maintenance so basically they're saying hey this connectivity is not that good we've tried it we know how bad it is so we're going to make a system not only for you but for our uses when we recover our falcon 9 rockets at over $165,000 per month for 25 meg download by 25 meg upload of prepaid bandwidth, satellite internet was one of the top operating costs for SpaceX's recovery fleet. And because the vehicle can generate hundreds of gigabytes of data, SpaceX regularly played 
paid cover costly overage fees. So we've seen this before. So the, the views that you get from a Falcon nine landing on one of the recovery vehicles on, of course, I still love you, etc. cetera. Um, we've seen these videos and they're not that good, you know? So, <laughs> so we know that that's where this is coming from, it, but that's an operating cost for SpaceX. So if you think about it, a Falcon nine launch of a Starlink satellite, that is, um, uh, it's advertising basically if you see it on youtube so all of these starlink launches that you see on youtube that goes into their advertising budget so this hundred sixty five thousand dollars a month is an operating cost for those advertisements basically and also of course they're sending the rockets to space and there are satellites starlink satellites that are going into orbit so they can provide low cost internet to people um low cost satellite internet i should say a transformational improvements with Starlink. Now, this is where it gets really juicy and good. Under an experimental license, SpaceX recovery teams had the opportunity uh, to test and develop Starlink's maritime terminals prior to market release with dramatic results. This is really cool. 5,900% added download, download throughput, 700% added upload throughput, a 95% uh, reduction in latency. That's huge. 70% reduction in cost. So if you have a fleet of boats out there right now and you're relying on vSAN and you can reduce your costs by 70% by installing a Starlink terminal on your boat or on your fleet, your whole fleet, um, that sounds like a great business opportunity for people to take advantage of. With a max upload speed of 40 megs on each installation, Starlink was uh, has enabled the transfer of hundreds, hundreds of gigabytes of data within hours of the rocket landing. Uh, that was not possible by the VSAS system. Starlink also reduced latency by 50% to just 50 milliseconds, allowing operators to respond faster for even greater control over the fleet. SpaceX monthly costs. VSAT $165,000 before Starlink, and with Starlink, $50,000 thousand dollars so they're saving a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars just by using starlink at a flat rate of five thousand dollars per vessel per month uh, spacex will see a nearly 70 percent reduction in monthly internet cost for the fleet after implementation of starlink so this is this is what i was talking about before so the the starlink satellite internet launches you'd see a falcon 9 come back to of course i still love you and it looked like the picture on the left you could barely see it it was cool that you got to see a, a rocket landing on a drone ship in the ocean but on the right you get to see the actual rocket like that's so much better that's such a better image quality and not just image but voice video um if you if you're going to do a video call with your loved ones when you're out on, on the ocean um the best thing to do is to have a very good connectivity because you want to see your kids you want to see your family you want to see the other people in your life that are doing the cool things that they're doing and you want to see them in great detail so that's where the starlink for maritime comes into play so if you're interested in this stuff go to starlink.com um, it's great for rural internet it can save you some money over time. And also, I mean, if you have a fleet of boats, this is probably your best bet at this point. I mean, it saved SpaceX 70% off their internet bill just because they installed Starlink. 70% from $165,000 to $50,000. That's a huge reduction in cost. That's, that's insane. That's so much money. So anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Would you get Starlink on your boat? If you have a boat, that would be pretty cool too. I don't have a boat myself, but it would be pretty neat to have a Starlink terminal on your boat. I don't think it's useful for small boats um, and it's kind of cost prohibitive for uh, like a smaller fleet or, you know, like a party boat or something like that. Just don't get it for your party boat. Just use your phone if you have to. But if you're going out deep in the ocean, you know, like these recovery vessels do, it seems like a really good business option to have to save yourself 70 or 70% reduction in monthly cost. That's pretty great. So let me know what you think in the comments. Also, make sure to hit the sub button. Make sure to hit the like button. 
That's about it for today. Thanks to everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll see you next time on the Space News Pod.